Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Monday. This is Seattle Now. A COVID vaccine for young children could be on the way as soon as this week. I will absolutely get my kids vaccinated. I don't have any hesitations at all. If you're a parent who's already scheduling an appointment or have questions before you do, we've got you covered. We'll talk with a pediatrician at Seattle Children's in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. All righty now, time to get those ballots in. King County election says so far turnout among Seattle voters is at just under 20 percent. That number will certainly be going up as long as you get your ballot postmarked by tomorrow or in a drop box by 8 p.m. Turnout for the city's last mayoral election was 49 percent. Sure, there's a lot to think about. If you're a procrastinator who still needs some information, head over to KUOW.org and check out all of our election coverage. Meanwhile, Mayor Durkin says the city can't wait for whoever's up next at City Hall to fix Seattle's public safety staffing crisis. She's authorizing hiring bonuses to help fill the ranks at SPD and the city's 911 dispatch. The mayor's office says response times are down after more than 250 officers left the department in the past two years. The city will offer up to $25,000, depending on experience. It's an executive order, so the money won't require city council approval. And yes, that really was goodbye to M's third baseman Kyle Seeger at the final game of the season last month. The M's have made it official. They won't be bringing him back. And apparently, they let him know by email. The Seattle Times reports GM Jerry DePoto tried to reach him by phone and text, but when he couldn't get through, the assistant GM emailed Seeger's agent. I don't know. Seems a little impersonal for a guy who played his whole career in Seattle, no? Either way, Seeger will be a free agent next season. Final approval of a COVID vaccine for 28 million young people between the ages of 5 and 11 could come this week. The FDA signed off on Friday. A CDC advisory panel will meet tomorrow. Almost 680,000 children here in Washington would be eligible, one of the largest groups that haven't been reached yet with a vaccine. We know there are a lot of families with questions, so we invited Dr. Dimitri Christakis back. He's a pediatrician at Seattle Children's Hospital and the editor of the Pediatrics Journal of the American Medical Association. Great to talk to you again, Dimitri. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this is still working its way through the approval process, but it sounds like it could be happening soon. Yes, my expectation is that it will be approved this week, and I think uh, vaccines will start shipping and will be available probably by the end of next week, certainly the week after that. Yeah, certainly a lot of places are thinking about plans for getting those young people in as soon as possible once that right. approval comes through. Correct. We've started making plans at Children's Hospital, for example, and I know pediatricians all over Washington State are making plans as we speak. Yeah. Of course, parents will want to know if this is safe to give their children. Here's a question about that from one of our listeners. This is Phil in Issaquah. So I have four kids, ages four to 13, and with their little bodies changing as much as they are, I hear that I should just know that the vaccine's going to be fine for them. But I would love to understand if there are any concerns, what are they? And what are any potential side effects? What do you say? Yeah, it's a really good question. And I certainly understand why parents of children are concerned. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that this is a new vaccine and uh, we haven't had a new vaccine for kids for some time. But the process for approving vaccines for children is the same. And it might help to sort of revisit one of the more recent vaccines that we had approved, the chickenpox vaccine. Most of us, myself included, got chickenpox as a kid. The truth is that very, very few children were ever hospitalized with chickenpox and much fewer children died from chickenpox than have died from COVID even this past year. So we have experience doing this. We've done it before. And the chickenpox vaccine has more side effects than what we've seen from the COVID vaccine, at least for older children. Now, keep in mind that the younger children are going to be getting a third of the dose that the older children are getting. Okay, so that should make a difference in terms of side effects, the lower dosage. Well, it should. So, you know, the approval process always goes in stages. And so in the original 
uh, study that was submitted that the CDC and the FDA reviewed or are going to review, it was about 2,500 children, uh, which is a lot, but, and it was enough to show benefit. It was enough to show a 90% reduction in symptoms, but it's not nearly as many as are going to be getting the vaccine in the future. Sure. But the, the truth is the reason we go down in age the way we do is because we learn from what's happened before. So we have lots of data now on 11 to 16 year olds. Uh, millions of them have been vaccinated. And the other thing that people should know, and I think it's important because people may remember the clotting side effects noted with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Those recurred at less than one in a million <laughs> vaccinations, and yet it was detected. Now, some people felt like, oh my God, this shows you that this vaccine is unsafe. Actually, it's the opposite. That rate of side effects is less than many, many medications that people take all the time. It's less than birth control pills. The thing that people should be reassured by is that our system is sufficiently sensitive that it caught a side effect that was that rare. And in the 11 to 16 year olds that have now been immunized for quite a while, we have not seen significant side effects. And so I expect that while there might be some side effects for younger children, most notably the ones we usually see, which is pain at the injection site, maybe some low grade fever, maybe a little bit of mild symptoms, the things that those of us that have gotten the COVID vaccine ourselves, and I hope we all have, went through. I can assure you it's way better than getting COVID yourself. It's way better than your child getting COVID. And I want to point out because, you know, I have been for, gosh, what is it, 18 months now, desperately advocating to try to help us all get past this, most especially to help our children return to some level of normalcy. And this will really help. You mentioned this was a third of a dose. Still two shots, though? Still two shots, correct. Okay. Here's another parent with a question for you. This is Meredith from Chehalis, and I have one daughter, and I will get her vaccinated. My question is, she is 11, nearly 12, and should I go ahead and get her vaccinated as soon as possible at 11 with the lesser dose, or should I wait a few weeks and get her vaccinated at the adult dose when she's 12? Great question. It's a really, a really good question. And one of the weird things in pediatrics is that we draw lines by ages. I would give her the 12-year-old dose in a couple of weeks if that's really what it's going to be. How about young people who have already had COVID? Should they still get vaccinated? Also a really good question. And from all we know, again, this is data from adults, the answer is yes. One, a lot of kids, a lot of grown-ups who had COVID didn't mount a very strong immune response. The vaccine gives a much stronger, much longer lasting immune response. It's not by any means perfectly true, but there's a correlation between symptoms and immune response. We always think of it as the virus. Most of them are your body's immune system fighting the virus. And oftentimes, as we know, kids have not been very symptomatic with COVID and their immune response is likely not nearly as good as it would be having gotten the vaccine. So they'll be much better protected with the vaccine than they would be uh, just having had the virus. All right, so get the vaccine even if you have had COVID. Children and adults. Children and adults, good reminder. You know, it's understandable that parents would have some amount of hesitation. I will be the first parent to tell you that my thinking is not always rational because it is my love for my child, right? This is something state health officials sound like they're expecting. We heard from one person who says she plans to get her young children vaccinated, but not immediately. She wants to wait a few months to see about side effects, to see if anything develops. Is there harm in waiting? So first of all, the side effects that we've seen with any vaccine are present quickly. People worry about long-term side effects. We haven't seen them with any vaccine. We have not seen them with the COVID vaccine. And now we have over, uh, what do we have now? For me, I got my vaccine in January, so we have almost 10 months of data on COVID vaccine, no evidence of long-term side effects. So we'll see pretty quickly if there's serious side effects in kids. I don't expect to see any serious side effects. And the downside of waiting. Well, the downside of waiting is that COVID is everywhere, right? The Delta variant is incredibly contagious, and we are seeing many more kids hospitalized than we have before. Likely that's because many more kids are getting infected. So the downside of waiting is the risk that your child will get COVID. You know, as a pediatrician, the best advice I can give 
is by telling parents what I would do if it were my kid. Yeah. But for those of you that care what I would do, if I did have a kid, a five, or 11, five to 11 year old child today, I would get them vaccinated. And I would do it because I'm seeing kids very sick with COVID at the hospital. And I don't want that to be my child. And I would feel terrible if I had postponed the vaccination even a month or two and seen that happen to them. And again, it's been a while since we've had a new vaccine approved. So most parents are thinking about this as a novel experience. But those of us that have been around long enough, certainly those of us that are pediatricians and have been vaccinating kids, it's not our first rodeo. We've seen other new vaccines approved and we know that they're safe once they're approved and should be widely disseminated. Dr. Dimitri Kostakis is a pediatrician at Seattle Children's Hospital and editor of the Pediatrics Journal of the American Medical Association. Always good to talk with you. Thank you, Dr. Kostakis. Thank you for having me. Everybody stay safe and everybody, everybody who can, please get vaccinated as soon as possible. Thanks for listening today. Jason Pagano produced today's show with help from Diana Opong. Our production team is Claire McGrain, Jenny Cecil Moore, and Caroline Chamberlain Gomez. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. 